Hi, my name is William Rawlings. Um, I'm a writer, and I want to tell you a little bit about me and where I'm from. I was born and raised in San Isabel, Georgia, where I still live. I think I'm a sixth generation resident of Washington County. My family's lived there since the 1790s or 1800s, early 1800s. It's a great place to live. I, I was born, bred, raised, and still live in rural Georgia. I love that part of the world. I got into writing somewhat on a whim. I, um, I guess I was a little bit bored, perhaps a typist with too much time on my hands, as I like to say. And so perhaps about 15 years ago, I first started writing. And to my great shock and surprise, my books were successful. My first five books were novels, suspense novels. Uh, one critic described them as being Southern suspense. That is, they were mystery novels set in the... Uh, non-urban, I preferred that word to rural, the non-urban South, and they did quite well. When the publishing market began to crash for the housing market around 2008, 2009, I switched from doing, non, from doing fiction to non-fiction. I first started with magazine articles. Having lived here all my life, it's hard not to know a lot about Georgia history, or at least be interested in it. My first nonfiction book was A Killing on Ringjaw Bluff, published in 2013 by Mercy University Press. It's done quite well. It's a, it was the story of the crash of the cotton economy, which is by itself possibly boring. I don't know, but I wrapped it with a great tale of a infamous murder in the mid-1920s, which makes it a most interesting novel. My subsequent novel was The History of the Ku Klux Klan in the 1920s, which was published in 2016 by Mercer Press. And next year, I'll have another book coming out from Mercer Press, which is a series of short pieces on Georgia history. The reason I switched from, non, from fiction to nonfiction is the fact that fictional works have a relatively short life, even if you're a very well-known and very successful author. At best, your book is good for six months or a year, and then basically sales fall off to near nil. A good nonfiction book, however, has a life of possibly years or decades, depending on what it's about. So it's, it's, it's good to work a year, two years on writing something and have it around for a little bit longer than than it took you to write it, which is not the case with nonfiction. I will probably go back and do at least one more fiction novel before I uh, finish my writing career, and I hope to do a few more uh, works of nonfiction, particularly focusing on Southern and Georgia history. The lecture on September 22nd is going to be about the lost Confederate treasure, the lost Confederate gold. This is one of the great Southern stories that everybody has probably heard about. And I think there are about as many versions of the story as there are leaves on trees. But let me tell you this one true version of which I hope I'll communicate. The basic premise is that uh, near the 1st of April, 1865, Richmond, Virginia was about to fall to Northern troops. Jefferson Davis and the Confederate cabinet departed south with a, with a so-called treasure train that contained in the neighborhood of a million dollars in 1865 dollars in both gold and silver and other valuables. Six weeks later, when Jefferson Davis and party were captured near um, Irwinville in South Georgia, they had no money. So the question is, what happened during this six-week period of time to the gold? And there are so many great stories, some of which are real, some of which are totally fake, some of which have been made up, and everything in between. What I want to do is basically review the facts and say what really happened. And I have a great surprise, too, because there is some truth to this story which nobody knows about, and I'm going to, I'm going to reveal this during my, during my talk. I have 
have, have had some interesting experiences. One of my novels involved the fate of the lost Confederate treasure, and subsequently in my next book I've actually got an accurate or supposedly accurate account of what really happened. So between the two, I think it should be a fascinating evening.